well, today we got a little bit of a picture book. Now, I don't usually do picture book reviews, but here we go. Hello, fellow Pop Questers. It is our Aaron the Pop Quester, and today we'll be talking nothing about plot. A uh, Rock from the Sky by John Classen, I think. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, and well, let's get right on to it. So, this picture book actually got numerous prizes everywhere and a lot of children and adults are actually enjoying its content. So I took a look and basically I'm going to talk about some of the symbolized symbolism and stuff. Of course, there's like an analysis video done by the author, but I didn't actually watch that. Mostly because I wanted to be sort of untarnished with my opinion and what I got from the book. So I can, you know, it's if, a, if an author can't properly show his or her you know, intentions just through the book without explaining it, then that's not a good author. So let's see what I got and let's see what he got. So, so let's start. So draw from this guy, so the spots. So in the first like part of the book, there's this, this, uh, this torturous person. I think that's an armadillo. I'm not completely sure. The torturous story just goes, okay, there's the spot that I stand in. And it's really, really nice spot. And this spot is the best. And the armadillo goes over there and he goes, I have a bad feeling about this spot. And he goes away to another spot. And eventually a rock falls on that spot. So I think maybe the spots actually represent perspectives or perspectives of the person. That's pretty much because, you know, in some of the scenes, there's scenes where they call out to each other, but they can't hear each other. So maybe that could represent a different perspective and how you can't truly understand someone's perspective without standing there, you know? I think that makes sense. And the rock maybe represents facts or truths, which could change or alter a different perspective. For example, these two have perspectives or opinions it could be even, and they have different opinions, they have different perspectives, and then suddenly a rock falls on one of the opinion, maybe a hard fact that changes it, or a hard fact that denies the person's opinion. For example, flat earthing, that's an opinion, but that's not true. So maybe it could be a fact or something that completely proves that opinion wrong. And also the spots could also like sort of show like social positions in some ways because you could stand on this spot of riches but under those riches are a bunch of dead bodies that you have to step on to get up to the riches and you're on that spot and you're like ah this is a comfortable spot to be in and eventually your old wrongs will come back maybe in a form of a rock boom there's a lot of things that you could represent and also um, also, there's a scene where Torches sort of climbs, tries to climb up the rock and sort of falls down and the armadillo goes, Hey, you okay? Did you fall down? Do you need help? And he's like, I never need help. And then he's like, oh, are you tired? And he's like, I'm not tired. I'm never tired. But he falls asleep. So, um, some things that we can think about here is pride. That's one of the more obvious ones. Like, you know, he's too prideful to admit it. And it's usually pretty stupid to not ask for help because of your damn pride. Put it down and ask for help. It's always beneficial. At least it can't be unbeneficial, at the very least, if you know what I mean. And yeah, so that could be one thing. And also no one ever repeats something just to like, not really mean it. Like he's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stuck. I'm not tired. I'm, I'm never tired. Like no one repeats that twice. If that person repeats that twice, that usually means they're trying to convince themselves. Just a fun little thing and a, quite an interesting little thing that I sense from here because that's actually how a person would deny something or try to convince himself or herself. So that's really nice little bit is what I'm saying. And the future. Now this is probably the most confusing of all of the little chapter thingies, whatever it is. I mean, it's not a chapter book, so I guess little sections? Let's call them sections. And the one about the future, I think maybe it represents the good and bad things that will happen in your future. Close your eyes and you think about your future job, but all of your different, different like bad things that are gonna happen to you in the future. So at first they just think about the beautiful future of the forest and all that, that's the good stuff. Then the whatever that thing is, the one I let's call it the alien monster 
forest thingy. The alien monster forest thingy appears and starts burning it down, right? So we can think about that as like a future threat or something that's hanging over them that could be like a future task or like a future problem. And then they just close their eyes and make it all disappear. And I think that like, sort of comes back to them because later on, the, uh, the monster comes back, right? Because the monster just comes back at like the last chapter or last section as we agreed on. And I believe that sort of represents like you can't just close your eyes to all your future troubles. You gotta face it there or you gotta start readying to face it because otherwise the future time's gonna keep running and that will catch up to you. I think perhaps it means that. Or it could mean something completely different. I don't know, but that's what I know from it. And the sunset. So that's like the second to last chapter. And I think that just sort of represents like, you know, fleeting moments that you can't enjoy if you if you're alone. And you need to like like I just said, time is unforgiving. It always moves, it always flows, it doesn't wait for anyone. So don't waste your time and enjoy those fleeting moments. Because in one second it's gonna be there and those opportunities will disappear before you can grasp them if you're not fast enough. So that could be something that it represents. Or it could be representing like missing out with like friends or something, but you know, that would be the more one-dimensional approach, I believe. And uh, the last one I already talked about connecting to the future. So that's pretty much my entire analysis. And like, there's a lot of different ways you could look at this. Like it could be like that there's a different messages for each section which would honestly also make sense. It depends on the author. Or it could be the different sections sort of pass on the message and differentiate it and change it and add on to it as it moves on, which is also pretty likely. That's what I, that ends for, or a mixture of connecting and not connecting. I think it's the third one personally, because that's what I got from it. That's how I analyze it, analyzed it. But from the author's perspective, it could all fluently connect. Or perhaps they're all completely separate. I don't know. I'm not the author after all. But as a reader, that is what I got. And honestly, that's the most important, right? What your readers can get without you spoon feeding the information into them. So that's pretty much it. And I think that these kind of books that have really open-ended questions are excellent. Because, you know, everyone, the beauty of those kind of books is that everyone, no matter how simple it may look, can enjoy them. They can think about it, they can think about it, they can, they can try to think about symbolism because there's a million different ways that a reader could think about this. Like I said, if one person, if 10 people read 10, read this same book, There'll be 10 different stories when you ask them about it. It depends on perspective, it depends on what they see and their opinion. So I believe that's the real beauty of such an open-ended book. And that's why I didn't actually look at the answer sheet or the author's actual analysis video because I wanted to show my untarnished opinion about the actual book. I don't know, maybe some of them were intended or some of them weren't. I don't know, well, maybe none of them were, I don't really know. But that is what I as a reader got it. And like I said, it is a great book. And I would recommend this to all ages to just sort of look at it and sort of just think about life and reconsider your life decisions and sort of think about life in general. And it makes you think. Every good book does that. It might ask a question and solve it in its rather different manner. Or it might ask questions and make you think about it. And this is the latter, I believe. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron the plot quester. It is an excellent book. And who knows? Maybe there is a rock waiting right above me. <laughs> and it'll fall down when I do something wrong. Actually, that's a terrifying thought. Let's not think about that.